everybody, welcome back this week as we continue our walk through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the fourth commandment, that commandment that talks about the proper time of worship. Today, we're going to look specifically at what day is the Sabbath day. Uh, we see that in question 59 which this week, which asks, which day of the seven has God appointed to be the weekly Sabbath? The answer to that is the from the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ, God appointed the seventh day of the week to be the weekly Sabbath, and the first day of the week ever since to continue to the end of the world, which is the Christian Sabbath. So on the surface we think, well, the fourth commandment tells us that it's the seventh day, so why are we saying that it's the first day now? Well, let's look at it a little closer. Let's see what exactly is this fourth commandment telling us. So we find these commandments in Exodus 20 that we've been looking at. Specifically, this fourth commandment is found in verse 8, which reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the, to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So let's listen to this carefully. It says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. So six of seven you shall labor and do all your work. And the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. So one of seven is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. So it's not specifically telling us that it is the seventh day or the last day of the week. It's just that it is one of seven. Then we see in this uh, text that it gives us an example to show this from, from creation. So, you may be asking yourself now, then, okay, well, well, if um, it's one of seven, I can pick whatever day I want. Well, I'm not saying that either. Think about it. These first three commandments, are we worshiping the way we want to, or are we worshiping the way God wants? Should we be worshiping the way God wants or the way we want? Um, the answer is we should be doing the way God wants. This is God's time of worship this devotion to our object of worship, um, which is we talked about in the first commandment. Who is our object of worship? It's God. Who told us that? God. Uh, we look at the second commandment. It tells us about the banner of worship. Well, who tells us? Who gives us that instruction? God. Who tells us how to come to worship? God. In the third commandment, we talked about that. So wouldn't it make sense that in the fourth and final of these four, looking specifically at our way of worshiping God, wouldn't you think that he would tell us the time as well? He does in the scriptures. Um, so God did set uh, the order of days in Genesis 2. We saw that in the creation narrative where everything God did, he created first in the span of six days. And he rested on the seventh, at the seventh, the last day after creating the earth. So God appointed that seventh day of the week to be the weekly Sabbath when he made it holy at creation. So this is creation before pre-fall of mankind, everything, Adam's first sin, um, the very beginning of the Bible. Now, we think as we go through the, the scriptures of the, the Old Testament, it's always, everything is looking forward to this coming king, this great redeemer, uh, the second Adam, to save those elect that he chooses. This redeemer is found in Jesus Christ. He is the redeemer. So Christ lives this life of a servant on earth, um, being fully man, but not surrendering his deity as God as well. So he's fully man and fully God. Um, when Christ died, he took that full weight of sin to all of us. 
this this gospel that we know about is he was crucified dead and buried as we read in the apostles creed um god at that time then sets the order again for the weekly sabbath he sets that order in a new way when he raised christ from the dead on the first day of the week and he called his church together to worship him on that day that lord's day okay so the first day of the week became the Lord's Day, the weekly Sabbath, or the Christian Sabbath, all right? Now, as you look in the New Testament, you'll see some instances, I think of one offhand uh, from one of the letters of Paul that he wrote, speaking of Sabbath. Now, you have to be careful about it speaking of a Sabbath because there are um, warnings in the New Testament about that Sabbath in the context of Jewish customs. So the Jews held to the old covenant. All right, Jesus Jesus fulfilled that, created this new covenant. This old, old covenant is, is no longer valid, but the Jews still held to that, where we as Christians are to hold on to this new covenant of, this, of, of God, of Christ being our Savior. Um, so God says that the Lord's day is on the first day of the week, as God raised Christ from the dead on the first day of the week. So that's why we celebrate it on the first day of the week, or observe, worship God, uh, devote ourselves to God. So as Christians, we are called to devote ourselves completely to God, one day of seven, the first day of the week, as we see Christ was raised on the first day of the week. So which day of seven has God appointed to be the weekly Sabbath? We see, we've talked about it today. From the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ, God appointed the seventh day of the week to be the weekly Sabbath. And the first day of the week ever since to continue to the end of the world, which is the Christian Sabbath. 